The season has started fresh and new, but drivers will no doubt be thinking of the beating they took in the points from our two champions. In particular, the GTO champion Yuko Leskala managed 10 wins out of 12 rounds and never once finished outside the podium positions. Those are some ominous stats. Will he be just as hard to beat in season two? We'll find out soon as we get ready to watch round one of the iRacing Camel GT series. And you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Hi, I'm Joe Peek, and with me in the booth is Adam Lindgren. Behind the scenes is our director, Sean Crackers Ambrose, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Road America provides a popular classic to kick things off with. The drivers should be familiar, but how about you? Let's head to our track guide for a little refresher. Welcome to Road America. Nicknamed America's National Park of Speed, it's easy to see why just by looking at how the track is laid out. Long straights are a major feature and drivers will build up incredible momentum before they find themselves interrupted by tight 90 degree corners. In fact, for a four mile circuit, it has shockingly few turns. It also has little in the way of variation in layouts. The main course is only broken up once with a single chicane added in the bend version. But don't take this to mean that it's a boring track. Elevation change happens many times over a lap, with a few places taking you into corners which are quite blind. But two of the turns on the back half of the course are perhaps the most distinctive. One is the carousel with its more than 180 degree radius. It just feels like it never stops. The other is the kink. Terrifyingly fast with very little runoff, it can end someone's race in a flash. As you'd expect, the heavy braking zones make for some ideal overtaking spots. Turn 5 sees plenty with its downhill entry. The hurried downs can offer drivers a chance at a sneak attack if you're brave, and then Canada Corner gives you one last shot before the lap is over. It's no wonder major organizations such as IMSA, IndyCar, NASCAR, and the SCCA all host major races here. All in all, many drivers rate this track as the best track in North America. Many who hop in the seat and try it can quickly understand why. Well, Adam, I'm glad that we're kicking things off here because it seems to be one that attracts plenty of drivers. Uh, yeah, definitely, Joe. I mean, Road America may just be one of the most conventional starting circuits for the Camel Series in recent memory. With its 4-mile or 6.5-kilometer 14-turn circuit boasting 2.5 lanes of passing opportunity at most points, the multi-class drive around here is not as hazardous as many of the tracks Camel visits, but it does have its danger zones, primarily the kink, Bill Mitchell bend, and the final turn on the straightaway. Otherwise... The track has always coaxed out fantastic battles from our camel drivers, featuring side-by-side -side battles for entire laps at a time, and amazing cutting and weaving through the traffic to stay on the tail of the competitor ahead. Now, as far as the cars today, Joe, we're getting reports that we need to throw away everything we know about these machines. In the past, the Audi GTOs out of our two vehicles have felt the most at home here, with a good selection of 90-degree turns and a couple of short sweepers that you can adjust the setup for. Their biggest struggles have often been maintaining speed through the kink and not burning up the left front tire around the carousel. The Nissans, on the, on the other hand, used to feel a little out of touch here as the bumpy track surface combined with high curbs and right angle turns made it a challenge to consistently get power down, but once they hit the back half of the course, the Nissans often get flying again. Now with a reset in the points championship and that new patch that we talked about coming from everything that we're seeing here, it's going to be interesting to see what the new season holds, Joe. Well, before we get to that, why don't we look at last season and see how the points wound up. Fabian Gerber, as I mentioned, our winner by more than a win's worth by the uh, end of the season. Now, the interesting thing about that, it was only four wins total over the course for Fabian Gerber. So not uh, the shellacking maybe I made it sound like, but you have to consider uh, that he was just so darn consistent that nobody else was able to touch him by the end. Syandra kind of tripped and faltered, and I think he's going to be eager to try and uh, make up for that this season as everything will reset, and he's got a chance to try and go for that crown once again. Uh, Jamie Hall with a decent season, but uh, definitely didn't keep up like he would have hoped with Nick Mukanos in the hunt for a while and slipping down to fifth. 
in the end. Now, the GTO Championship. I talked a little bit about how that went, Adam. Why don't you give us the details? Yeah, talking about untouchable, Yuko Leskola with those 10 wins ends up 86 points over Reed Miller, who jumped Yoni Kaijin, who didn't show up for the last two races of the season, and ends up in the third position with Reed taking second. The battle for that fourth position ends up being uh, Ben Laffler, who ends up taking that one. And Obe Trangarade, even after missing the first couple of races of last season, just so consistent and so quick, often getting a couple top threes, he jumped himself up in into the fifth position by the end of the season and jumped up there by three positions in the closing race alone. Uh, great stuff from Ove. Let's see now that uh, we'll see if he's here today. Actually, I do see him on the board. So speaking of today, let's take a look at the race details. The opening round of a 12 race season, and it is a 40 minute sprint race for this series today. Open setup, as we said, drivers can't really use their old setups, at least in the Nissan. So uh, might see a few struggling, uh, even though they are pretty open about sharing those in the community. Uh, they have no fast repair, so if they get any sort of damage, they're going to have to stop down pit lane, which is not planned. There are no scheduled pit stops here. And there you can see they will get a disqualification or a drive-through penalty, depending on how many incidents they rack up. Hopefully that won't be an issue we'll need to talk about. A few of the prototypes already across the line. Nick Mukanos, interestingly, currently the fastest of that yeah, Nick doing a great job up there at the top of the board, but then we got Fabian Gerber, Alex Gall, Phil Lake, all jumping up to the top of the board now that they've gone through. These Nissans are so much faster than they were last season. You can see even just looking at the attitude of the car as it drives down the straightaway, how much of a different drive it's going to be for these guys. Here's Yuko Leskala, last season's champion in the GTOs, putting in his first time lap, a 203.983. So we've got a 15 second gap. No, we've got a 17 second gap joe between the nissans and the audis that's going to make multi-class around here chaotic to say the least here's billy rolla trying to put in his first lap ahead of him i'm watching alex millward just crossing now that's a face we haven't seen in a bit and he puts himself on the pole rolla in the meantime is going to put himself into second in the gto so some drivers are clearly uh, on it from the word go here and are challenging some of our established quick heads. Absolutely, there's Cyandra crossing the line. He's still down in sixth position, but we are the, the, the competition in the Nissans right now is absolutely unbelievably steep. Now, it's great to see Billy Rolla and Ove Trangrade back in this fight in the GTOs as well, even with Yuko Leskola taking provisional pull at the moment by two tenths over Billy Rolla. Yuko's not going to be able to sleep to rest on his laurels this season at all with those two heavy hitters coming back into the series to, be, to try and challenge. Nick Mukanos who sits in fifth. Second lap, not quicker. I can report that Fabian Gerber had an off track, so this one will not count for him. Uh, in the meantime, he could be overtaken by Alex Gall. He's less than a tenth of a second behind Millward. Can he snatch the pole away as he crosses the line? It is a 46.5. That's about a tenth faster, but it's not enough. He's 12 one hundredths off of Alex Millward. That being said, he did pop himself into second position, so outside pole, Tobias Gerber uh, had it off on his first lap. On his second lap comes in the eighth position, so quite a bit uh, down from, well, not quite a bit, actually. It's not that far behind to, uh, Fabian Gerber, his brother, but um, a good half second off pole. Here's Ian Haycox crossing the line, a 205.593. That's going to be good enough for 10th position with Rob Olnick trying to improve his starting position. Only good enough for fifth right now. Reed Miller currently in fourth up ahead of him. Then we get Obe Trangrain, Billy Rolla, and Yuko Leskala, who crosses the line for his second lap and does improve, and he's going to retain that provisional pole. Sporting that gold, I guess, for a champion now as Matthias Havdal, who tends to be strong at these tracks, is not so good today. That one didn't count, so he'll stay in seventh. Syondra behind him also not able to improve. Reed Miller, he goes faster, gets up one position, and then bumps right back down into fifth once again. Wow, that was Ove Trangrade who jumps himself up three positions up to the third position, so a great job for him to do to get up there. This is Joseph Mudrak who's coming who's gonna be the last one, I believe, to cross the line here. Mudrak currently in 17th with a 150.182. He's got about four seconds to make up to get into the top ten. Let's see whether or not he can do it. Joseph now has a full season under his belt, and he's in with the big boys as this is a split race today, so He's definitely racing with the fast guys. Can he go quicker? A 151. Unfortunately, he's not going to do it. Uh, but there's still a lot of racing left to go in today's event. So 
Hopefully he'll be able to uh, work his way up the field and overtake a few along the way. We'll go to that grid in just a moment. A lot of question marks hanging over the heads of not only the drivers, but uh, us watching this race, wondering if the quote-unquote new Nissans will change the dynamic and change who is going to be good here today over the course of 40 minutes. So our starting grid is going to be Alex Millward, who starts on the pole. Alex Gall will be next to him, a front row of Alex's. As Fabian Gerber messed up his second lap, he'll have to settle for third. Phil Lake, back in the GTPs once again, will be P4. Nick Mucano starts from fifth. Cy Andre mysteriously down down on pace here in the qualifying, starting all the way back in six. Matthias Havdal, another one who only had one counted lap, will start from seventh. His tendency towards a low downforce, will that help him? Tobias Gerber will start in eighth position, not on the front row with his brother like we saw a lot of times last season. Nick Schneider will be in ninth, and then rounding out the top 10 is Stepani Linuluoto. As we go to the next slide, it is Michael Turk starting 11th with Fabian Jungbluth in 12th. New face here, Dan Bull starts in 13th. Ator Sintez Giendo starts in P14, and then it's uh, Stephen Warcup in the 15th spot. Last two on the grid for the prototypes will be Clayton McLeod and Joseph Mudrak. 17 Nissans on the grid, only 11 Audis, starting with Yuko Lesko, last season's champion, trying to start off on a good foot with that pole position. Going to get him some extra points here in the championship, and hopefully he can hold off second place Billy Rolla, who's joining the series once again. He was absent most of last season, but came in for the last couple of races along with Obey Trangrade in third, who also looked very strong towards the end of last season, but can only place himself in the top three for the last couple of races. We have Christian Streitenberger making a return. He qualified very well today, putting himself in the fourth position. Looks like he's been doing some practice in the off season. Reed Miller, Mr. Consistency, sitting right there in his very comfortable and very normal fifth position right now on the grid with Ricardo Fernandez, a name we haven't seen in quite a while here in the Camel Series, jumping into the sixth position ahead of Rob Olenek, who had not, not great season last season, unfortunately, but his pace was pretty decent. Not a great qualifying for him today. Ben Laughter going to line up behind him in the eighth position with Nils Kaur and Ian Haycox. Those two battled quite a bit last season. Then at the back of the pack, surprisingly, Roman Pavlowski and Maximede Thomason, two drivers who we know have a lot more pace than that, but just couldn't seem to get this newly adjusted car under them this patch. <laughs> I love sometimes we get to see behind the scenes with the drivers with, uh, with their chatter amongst each other in the sim. And uh, uh, I, I believe that, yeah, Nils Kaur, uh or no, excuse me, Ben Laughter is the one that said, uh, good thing I'm so handsome because I'm such a bad qualifier. <laughs> so not really happy with uh, where he put the car. Uh, but this is uh, going to be interesting, not just because of the change in the way that those Nissans uh, drive now, but we got a note from one of the drivers that there is now brake fade and it's significant in these Nissans, which I guess would be period accurate, Adam. But of all the tracks to have that appear on, uh, one of them with one of the longest straights and heaviest braking zones. Yeah, and so warming up that brake before they get down to the Marine to, uh, you know, through the Marine sweep through turn five and also into Canada Corner, the Nissans are going to have to be very careful of making sure that their brakes are warm enough before they head into those corners. Otherwise, they're going to have to do a much longer braking zone or they could overshoot it and go straight to the barriers. I'm expecting that we'll see a couple of guys go off because of the brake fade today, but I mean, it's brake fade is not something that a lot of drivers are used to here on the iRacing service so it's going to be an adjustment for everybody to make especially for some of these faster drivers so hopefully they've been putting in a lot of practice time this week do we have a nissan there that uh, was a little late i was trying to figure out who we were on board we couldn't even see any of the other nissans heading down the moraine sweep that was interesting as we watch them now go through uh the hurry downs into the more technical second half of the circuit. This is where they really got to watch out for that traffic today. I kind of wonder, especially since we see Millward back and quick, he's known for being fast, but not always as consistent with his finishing results. I wonder if it, the little bit of break will help him as we now hop on board with him. He'll be starting next to Alex Gall, who showed up for a single race last season and won it. Well, what's interesting to me about Millward is the question is whether or not this newly adjusted Nissan GTP is going to 
more play to his style of racing. Now, that being said, we know he's super fast, but if he's fast out front and not getting a lot of draft, we are also hearing that the Nissans, because of their extra speed, are burning through a lot more fuel, which means that these Nissan drivers are going to have to be careful to make sure that they can get to the end of this 40-minute race on a single tank. And believe it or not, probably during a couple of races this season, they might actually have to pit for fuel. Uh, for a splash of fuel over the course of the race. So pit strategy may be coming into play even for our shorter races in this series now. Mm, well, that will be fascinating, no doubt. As we come down to Canada Corner in the Porsche pace car, it leads them around just a couple more to go. Fabian Gerber, did he have more speed in it in the qualifying? Can he try and challenge that front row? And what about Philip Lake, who was just uh, plagued with bad luck all last season? Can he turn things around and manage to get himself a victory? As we look back at Villy Rolla, gonna try and retake his crown from Lescala, who has been on a tear this season. The pace car is coming up to the pit entry, and they're gonna give over control to Alex Gall as they wait patiently, excuse me, Alex Millward rather. And Millward is on it. Green flag is out for round one of the iRacing Camel GT Series. Not a good start for Gall as Fabian Gerber already looking up his inside. Look at them fan out coming down the front stretch down into the first corner. Fabian's got a nose ahead, but the battle's going to continue down towards turn three. They're all successfully through. And as they hit turn three, we're going to have to step away because the GTOs are starting. Yeah, the GTO started through the apex of turn 14. Yukolesko currently in the lead. Looks like Christian Streitenberger has lost a bunch of positions. I think he's off track, possibly, from the fifth, from the fourth position. Billy Rolla behind them. Obey Trankerade in third. Reed Miller fourth. And Ricardo Fernandez up to fifth now. Taking that Quattro into rally mode, unfortunately, in the first corner. The side-by-side -side battle for second with Gerber and Gall continues all the way to turn six, but Gall finally manages to get the best of them. All that side-by-side -side racing has lost them a second and a half to Millward. Absolutely, it's now side by side for the lead of the GTOs, actually. Yuka Leskala being challenged by Vili Rolla as they went up towards uh, turn six and through seven. Here they go towards Hurry Downs. Looks like Vili's really putting the pressure on Yuko early in this race, especially with how unknown these cars are to the drivers. It's going to be very fascinating to see how they handle themselves in traffic. The brakes looking good for all the drivers at the front of the pack right now. Trangerade following them, bringing along Reed Miller as well. Top four pretty close together here as they take it through the carousel. Leskal is used to this sort of pressure. He's used to leading the race. So this is not an unfamiliar position, but he didn't have Billy Rolla this close behind him as many times last season. So can he hold back the fin as oh. off track goes Trangerade? Yeah, Trangerade off track there through the kink. Now recovering, but Reed Miller closing in on him a little bit. Looks like Philly Rolla thought about making a move to the inside, thought better of it, decided to follow through Canada Corner, and now onto the tough Thunder Valley. Look at the pressure Philly's putting on. If he can get a good run through 14, he might be able to try and make a pass on Yuko down onto turn one. Bill Mitchell bend, and now the final corner. And yeah, he is awful close. I think a good slipstream is going to offer it up for Rolla. Indeed, as they start to pick up speed, already 150 miles an hour before they even cross the line, he is gaining hand over fist. Lescala does not defend. Rolla looks to the inside. He's got to finish the job into the corner. He's got a nose ahead. Does Lescala give it up? Yes, he's going to slot back into second. Maybe goes for the over-under, though. Oh, oh. And he backs off. Thought about it, but that being said, it's really difficult to follow another car through turn three, uh, to go side by side with another car through three. You don't want to lose that draft that you're going to get right here. It looks like Billy Rolla a little bit too far on the exit there. Flips the grass just a little bit now as they head towards the Marine Street underneath the bridge. We're going to see whether or not uh, Yuko's interested in catching up and maybe passing. He's definitely gaining. He's going to look to the inside. No, he thinks better of it. He backs out of it. Still sticks with him as they break hard for turn five. Are also being chased by Miller and Olenek. They're starting to spread away from Fernandez, who holds the sixth position. As they come out of turn six and up to seven. Ooh, a lot of speed for Trangrate on the way in, but it seems to hold him back on the way out. Expect to see these five names up at the front of this GTO field for the rest of the season if these guys are consistently visiting this series. These guys are super fast and super competitive. We're going to expect to see them up there for a long time on board with Obey Trangrade as he's trying to chase down Yuko Leskola, who just doesn't seem to have the pace at this early stage in the stint. Still plenty of time to go, so they don't need to fret right now. 
As they come down through Canada Corner, Alex Millward sets the fastest lap in the meantime as he keeps up that one and a half second gap over the rest of the field. Looks like Phil Lake, though, is starting to challenge Fabian Gerber. This is for third position in the prototypes. Yeah, Phil Lake doing a good job of staying on the back of Fabian Gerber. Looks like this newly set up Nissan is actually benefiting him a little bit here. Seems to be a lot more comfortable in that car than he was last season. So with all the adjustments that have been made to the car in the offseason by iRacing, it's awesome to see that these cars could still be developed and still be adjusted. Oh, Fabian Gerber a little bit deep through the corner, possibly a little bit of that brake fade already on lap three. It's possible, but looks like he just couldn't get the front brakes to be as effective, couldn't get the car to turn in. Three road on board there. Phil Lake still within about three tenths of a second of his rival down through the hurry downs. They've got Alex Gall at least within view, but certainly not Millward. He disappears around every corner. He has gotten so far ahead of them at this point. As they come out of the carousel, let's see if Lake can get a good enough run through the kink to maybe attack into Canada Corner. Yeah, Joe, looks like Fabian's really struggling to get the car slowed down right now. Looks like the front tires just are not cooperating. The front brakes are not cooperating with him. I don't think Phil's close enough this time. We're going to look on board, but Fabian having a hard time getting to the apex. That was a much better Canada Corner than he had last lap. So it's possible Fabian's getting a little bit more temperature into those brakes, a little bit more... Uh, energy into them getting the, that cooling right as well. Phil Lake right now chasing on behind. But Fabian, wow, good corner there through the final corner onto the Road America straight. Looks like Fabian's going to hold on to this position for another lap. Ooh, we had a big wreck from Christian Streitenberger. Blew his engine when he smacked the wall. So unfortunately, after starting up towards the front, he is out. This battle down into turn one is going to stay in favor Ooh. of Gerber. Oh, and have we had some more problems here? Uh, I'm looking at Nick McConos and Matthias Hovdahl, who are side-by-side -side for the sixth position in the GTPs. They've now got Nicholas Schneider, who's looking on behind them. Ooh, Hovdahl a little bit loose through the corner. Schneider as well. Great job from those guys to hang on to those cars. But it's actually getting pretty tight down here from seventh on back to 13th. Oh, but look at Hovdahl. He's known for this streamlined car with low down force that makes him a rocket ship in a straight line as he tries to attack Mukanos. Mukanos can't break late enough. In fact, he breaks too late, goes wide, and hands over six to Havdal. And here comes Schneider up the inside as well, trying to put pressure on Mukanos. Mukanos is gonna have the inside as they go through this one, this very challenging right-hander. And now as they dive down, through hurry downs they're going to head towards turn eight nicholas schneider up the inside again can hot mccannis hold on it's almost hit between the two of them as they head towards the carousel this is brought tobias gerber back in hobdell starting to run away my goodness so this has uh, been a bit of a tense lap for nick mccannis thankfully makes it the other side out the other side they go through the kink Hovdahl Ooh. next to the road was a great run in the back, Joe. He's going to put pressure on Tobias Gerber, who's going to cover off the inside, then swap over, almost running into the back of him. Here comes Tapani uh, Lina Luoto. That Tapani used to be one to, that fought for wins in this series, and he's all the way down in 11th. As the fin sizes up, Jungbluth and Tobias Gerber. Oh, we've I mean, had contact in the back, Joe, between Dan Bull and Steven Warcup. I'm uh, sorry, and Ator Sentes Gindo. Those two made contact as they went through Bill Mitchell Bend. Oh, side by side through there just often doesn't work well. Let's take a look at it. Oh, it looks like a little bit of an off there, I think, from Sentes Gindo. Yeah, and then Dan Bull just ends up shoving him off track. Unfortunately, as they went through, Bill Mitchell just thought he would be able to turn in a little bit more than he could. But Dan starting to fall back as well. He has some rear wing damage now, Joe. So Dan Bull off the pace at this point. Atro Sintescando as well trying to recover. Unfortunately, looking a little bit more like Raging Bull today. So hopefully he can get that together. He's got still about 30 minutes left to go. We're jumping back to the GTOs and Reed Miller being chased by Rob Oledek for fourth position. They're not too far behind Ove Trangrate. So I don't know how much they too, how much they want to tangle here, or else they could lose touch. Yeah, Reed's one who's known for thinking about the bigger picture during these races, so he's definitely gonna, if he feels the pressure from Rob, oh my goodness, Reed actually getting a little bit loose going into the corner, ended up with a four-wheel slide that slowed him way up at the apex. Rob Olenek almost ran into the back of him. We're out on board with Rob, we right on board with Rob now. I don't think he's gonna have enough pace to close back up on Reed, but they lost a lot of time to Ove ahead. 
definitely looks like it caught him out, having to check up and losing speed down the straight. Otherwise, should have had a good opportunity. We'll get another bite of the apple, I think, as they come down the Moraine Sweep. Depends on how well he exits turn three, which is right here. Yeah, good exit from Rob there. Reed Miller is trying to hang on to that position, but I think like everyone, everyone seems to be struggling with the brakes right now with these cars. I think they've done some major adjustments that are definitely um, affecting how these cars handle and how they break into the corners. Wow, there you see Rob taking a lot of space on the outside of that corner. I think he was concerned about running into the back of Reed. That brake fade definitely starting to show for the GTOs too. Ooh, my goodness, there's more uh, smoke from the tires from the cars ahead. You gotta be careful how much they abuse them. Uh, we talked about the tire temperatures. Well, it is 102 Fahrenheit on the track right now. So they are dealing with a, a very slick surface. Not to mention the fact that the tire wear has been increased for all of these classes as well. So if they abuse those tires too much, they're gonna really feel it towards the end of this race. I mean, it, this series, the complexion of the series has completely changed from a driver's perspective. From a viewer's perspective, it may not look that different, but I promise you, just looking at the behavior of the cars, everything is changing for these guys. Not much has changed for Millward. He's still a second and a half ahead of Gall. Interesting that he's not able to run away with him. Is he managing his pace? Is this a case of uh, the 10 thinking about those things, the tires, the, the brakes, everything on the car to make sure and just baby it until the finish when he can maybe push a little harder and get himself away when he needs to. Or maybe he knows the lap traffic will play in favor of him, which he's catching up to the back of uh, in about half a lap here. I think the Thomason will be up very soon. Absolutely. He's also got to think about the fuel consumption. You have to remember, Joe, that for these drivers, uh, you know, it doesn't do you any good to win by 10 seconds. I mean, it used to be that that was the best way to win because the more buffer you could put between the driver behind, that would work. But I don't think that's going to be the way that that's going to work uh, for in this series going forward. We're going to jump to the GTO lead because Billy Rolla, under Hebert's pressure from Yuka Leskala at the midpoint in this run. Stark contrast from what we see in the GTP lead since uh, Leskala has been all over the back of Rolla pretty much since the start of the race, but we haven't seen a whole lot of attacking. Now, I don't anticipate fuel being a problem for this class, but Leskala does seem to be biding his time somewhat since he has pulled out of moves a couple times already. Yeah, I think everyone's kind of biding their time until we get into traffic. Remember, none of them have done any traffic uh, experience except for possibly the Friday race that they sometimes are able to get to go official here uh, in the Camel GT series. So traffic is going to be a real question as we've actually had a wreck from uh, Ator Sintas. No, uh, Dan Bull actually going through turn three. I believe it's a single car incident. He's now recovered and back on track. Yeah, I'm checking it myself. I think he just spun up the tires and he managed to avoid the wall, so everything's hunky-dory, sort of, for the 27, who continues on. As we watch these leaders at the front of the GTOs, let's not count out Trangerate as well, and Alex Millward actually having to weave through some of our GTO cars. Yeah, Millward just now navigating that three-way battle for seventh position between Ben Lafteron, Pavlowski, and Niels Kor. Alex Gall now doing the same thing. You can see him sweeping up the outside of those guys as they head into Canada Corner. So Gall has gotten by, but now Fabian Gerber's going to get held up behind these guys now. And a battle between Cy Andra and Philip Lake. Cy gets to the inside of him down through Canada Corner as they have to deal with the lap traffic. Who is this going to play oh. in favor of? Almost shoved off the track. Phil Lake gave him just enough room. Squeezes oh, around the outside, but he dips a wheel into the dirt. And he's off into the wall because of that one tiny error. Just a little, just put one wheel in the dirt and Phil Lake in into the outside wall. That's some pretty decent damage to the left side. And especially with how fast these cars are now, it's going to be a real problem for him as far as the pace is concerned. But we're heading back up to this battle. But now between uh, Cy Andre and Fabian Gerber, Cy tight in behind. But look at this battle behind them even. This is for seventh position between Nicholas Schneider, Tobias Gerber, Fabian Newbluth, and Tapani Linualo. And they are coming up on that three-man group in the GTO class. What kind of role will this play? Schneider leads the quartet. 
And he's got plenty of gap back to Tobias Gerber. They catch them in a good spot down the Moraine sweep where they can really bide their time. But it's looking close between Lena Luoto and Jungbluth as they break down into turn five, given just enough at the apex, slow off the corner for Neil's core. Oh, three wide. And uh, excuse me, slow off for Tobias Gerber rather, rather and that's gonna give the advantage to Fabian Jungbluth. He gets up to eighth with a sneaky move. Oh, and it's still very close as Tafani was able to get a very good run on Tobias Fabian, trying to make his way around the outside. Jungbluth, good job making it through there. They're going past Ben Laughter, but Tafani is putting some serious pressure on Tobias Gerber right now as they go through the carousel. And up in front of everybody, Alex Gall, I guess from the traffic, has caught Alex Millward. Suddenly, uh, more than two seconds has evaporated. Oh, and we just had side-to-side -side contact between uh, Gerber and Audra. Audra is still side-by-side -side with them. They're coming through more of the traffic here, and that's going to be going past our champion. Champion passes champion onto the front stretch, and Fabian Gerber retains his third place. But for how long has Andre has got the bit between his teeth? He's tucked in right behind. He's going to try and go to the outside around turn one. I'm not sure how well this one's going to work, Sai, especially if Fabian has the brake freight going into the corner. Let's see how these guys handle it. It's going to be tight on the brakes for both of them. Still side by side as they exit one. Still side by side as they dive under the Briggs and Stratton sign and take the right hander through three. Very tight turn there. Sai Andre trying to do the over under, but clip the inside grass a little bit. He's going to lose the momentum. Whew, this may not be for the lead, but you can tell that Cy really wants to beat Fabian Gerber. He wants to kick off this season on a high note over the man that has beat him the past couple times as they break down into turn five. A little bit of blinking from Andre that time. Fantastic to see that th that part of the series has not changed. The close battles caused by the traffic. These guys definitely nose to tail for sure. Another battle behind them between Matthias Hovdal, Nick Bacanos, and Nicholas Schneider. Also very tight between those three drivers for the fifth position. We see them just showing up on the screen as they duck through a, set, a turn seven. Out of the Hurry Jones! That was close! Gerber with a mistake is going to hand it over to Cy Andra this time. Out of the Hurry Downs, just a little bit too much grass. Take a look at this. This is all hands for Fabian. Wow. Gerber, yeah, he just clips that outside gravel and tries to put his foot down while still in the grass on the outside because he knew Sai was coming. Whew, he saved that thing, but just barely. A rare mistake from the multi-time champion. And he's still on top of Sai Andre. He's not giving up on this fight. I wouldn't expect Fabian to do so. He's definitely going to be putting some pressure onto Sai Andre. He's not going to want to let Sai get away. He sticks with him on to the front stretch as they tick off another lap. We're almost to the halfway point at this part. And I can report that uh, though it was close for a while, Rolla has dropped Leskola by about a second and a half. So it is now gone in favor of the prototypes being much closer. We do have a bit of a fight between Reed Miller and Rob Olenek. In fact, it looks like Robbo might have a spot here. Yeah, it looks like Reed is not getting enough of a pace off of the corner. Rob Olenek, a great job on the outside, but look at this, Reed actually gaining a little bit once more. They get onto the long front straight. He's actually going to break a little bit later than Rob Olenek, but the Audi just can't quite hang it around the outside. They're going to have Dan Bull, who's trying to cut back through, and he's going to make a three on now side by side once again between Sayandra and Fabian Gerber. Oh my goodness, these two just can't look away for much more than a few seconds, and Andre will come out ahead as we watch from the 007 cam down through the Herbie Downs. The more they fight, the more time they're going to give up. It's already nearly nine seconds up to second place. Oh, and Rob Olnick's actually gone around through turn five. He outbraked himself, I think, into the corner, and now he's recovered, but that was really close between himself and Reed Miller there. It is going to cost him a position. Here is the incident. Fernandez sneaks through in the meantime. As you watch them side by side in the corner. That's Robbo on the outside of it in the yellow. Uh, I think he just got in the marbles there. Got in the marbles, a little bit of brake fade. Ended up just flicking it in to make sure he could actually make the corner and not dive out into the outside. So that was a good recovery from Robbo, but he doesn't seem to have a handle on how this thing breaks at this point in the build. A fascinating event for today 
really shows how much this thing has changed. As we look at our lead, Millward still is on the point, but Alex Gall wants back-to-back -back wins across the seasons. Yeah, it looks to me, Joe, like these guys are going to be passing through the Audis uh, twice, uh, sorry, three times this race total, so twice more is my prediction. Uh, might be, they might catch them a third time, but it'll be tight. So Alex and Alex have really got to think about how their strategies are going to work when they cut through the field once again. They've got about two to three more laps before they catch back up to that field. But, I mean, Alex Gall putting some great pressure on Millward right now. I'm going to put my, uh, my Bill Zahn tinfoil hat on here for a second. But these two stretching away, they're not as experienced as guys like Andra and Gerber. Do you think maybe they're using up too much fuel to be this far ahead? Oh, I mean, that's definitely something we're going to have to consider. Sionj is nine seconds behind, and he was one of the drivers who was talking to us about fuel consumption. So it's entirely possible that Millward is in trouble. Now, my question is whether or not Gall is in trouble because he's been tucked behind Millward for quite a while now. And if he's just and if he's doing that to in order to make sure that he's lifting and coasting during a decent amount of this uh, lap, I think that he might have an opportunity to maintain that pace and also maintain that gap to some. It did look like he backed it up a bit down into Canada Corner compared to, to Millward, so he could be using a little bit of that fuel saving as they come through the final corner to start yet another lap at just about exactly the halfway of this 40-minute race. And still haven't separated between Andra and Gerber. Ooh, he's gaining big time, though, this time as Alex Gall as he gets right up to the back. But again, he does not attempt to pass. Millward making a little bit of a defensive move into the first corner. And the more he can do that, the more he can get Millward offline. Ooh, Millward clipping the grass a little bit into turn five, able to hang on to it. But the more he can get Millward uncomfortable, the more he uses up his tires, the more he uses up his brakes, and the more advantageous of a position Alex Gall is in if he wants to affect a pass later on. Ooh, behind them, I think Mukanos might be under threat. Nick Schneider is right on top of him. This is going to be for the sixth position. Oh. In fact, late defense from uh, from Nick Mukanos. A pair of Nicks down into the corner. Which one's going to come out ahead? The inside. Oh, almost turns into Mukanos and Schneider. Oh, no. oh, they do come together. A little bit of contact. And they're going to make a little bit of a bump again. Oh, and a goodness. third one. And Nick Schneider gets shoved into the tires with that one. I do not think, I think Nick's going to be, well, both Nick's are not going to be happy about that. And I think they're both going to be looking at each other with some crossed eyes right now. This, let's take a look at this battle again, because all of this contact, I think, was avoidable. I, I If I recall correctly, I think there's been a little bit of history between them as well, so... I, <laughs> yeah, I think I Schneider think... wasn't happy about that move, that crossover. He gets a little bit too tucked in to the brakes here. Ends up getting a little close to Meccano. So now this first incident looked a little bit like net code, but then after that, Nicholas Schneider just comes across and hits his door again, and then loses the control of the car. Ends up hitting his door a third time. Now we have to go back to the battle for the lead because Alex Gall is as close as he's ever been to Millward getting out of the front straight. Are we going to see a pass here as Alex Gall? No, he is absolutely lifting All right. as he waits behind. Yeah, I think he is playing the long game. All right. Strategy call there from Gall. And that's got to make Millward sweat now that he realizes what's going on. Oh, looks like Ove Trangrate's had a problem. He's out. Oh, my goodness. When did this happen? I'm trying to find him. See where it went down. If it was recent, yeah, it uh, just happened. He lost it out of turn six in the number this is, 20. This is fascinating, Joe, because it looks like... I'm not sure what happened here. This this looks like possibly... Oh, he might have he might have been locking up the brakes so much and just got frustrated because we'll see him come through turn six, and I think he's just losing so much time. He knows he's faster than this. Well, he oh. lost control there, so it, it definitely was an accident. I, he maybe maybe clipped the wall just wrong that it ruined his suspension, and he immediately got the meatball and decided this I just can't I can't continue here. As this battle for the lead has been going on, Andres pulled about a second and a half gap over Fabian Gerber. 
is starting to leave him behind. Critically, he's got the gap, which was almost nine seconds, down to 7.8. Is he starting to pull on Millward and Gall? He is starting to pull on Millward and Gall, but the question is, is he's had no one to draft behind, so is is it going to matter? Is he going to be able to make it to the end on the field he has? And even if he does make it to the end, is it going to matter? Because Gall has been drafting behind Millward the entire time. Good question. Um, two teammates, though, probably in close contact, I bet. Might be helping each other out, giving each other numbers. I wonder if we could go back to Ricardo Fernandez, though. In fourth in the GTOs, he went by Rob Olenek after Rob had a mistake right here a bit ago, a few laps ago. Rob's already caught him, but it appears to me that Ricardo's also starting to run down Reed Miller for third. Yeah, Rob Olenek now putting the pressure on Ricardo Fernandez. Awesome to see Rob getting his elbows out once again. Uh, it's been a while since he's, I, I can tell it's been a while since he's felt feisty, and I think he likes the way that these cars behave now after this latest adjustment to the performance. He seems to be enjoying himself right now. His, the behavior of the car, it looks so com comfortable underneath him. Looks like he can chuck it exactly where he wants to put it, and that's a good feeling as a driver. By the way, uh, let's let's keep the cameras here, but I can report that down into turn five this time, Alex Millward had a big slide, didn't lose the position, but this looks like he's starting to feel the effects of the brake fade. I mean, I, it wouldn't surprise me. Alex Gall has put him into multiple positions that have put him under some serious pressure. So it's put him offline, it's put him in some bad positions, and especially with the adjustment to the tires that they've made, it's entirely possible that these tires are a lot more susceptible to uh, going offline and picking up the, the gravel. Now look at this. They're having to navigate their way past Ian Haycock's ninth place. This is those two laps that I was talking about. Looks like we have... Yeah, definitely those two guys very tight together, but Gall still very stout and determined to stay behind. But it's side by side between Rob Olnick and, and Ricardo Fernandez now on the front straightaway as they are heading towards turn one. Rob's gonna hold on. Rob's actually gonna make the pass on Ricardo. That was just a good exit off of the final turn. Yeah, they see him ahead now of the number 26. It's made good on that one. Boy, Ricardo's gonna get a, a heaping of I rating today. <laughs> Car number 26, and he is running fifth in his class. Oh just my goodness, job. Joe. Alex Milver just had to run off track in order to get around Niels Kor and Ben Laughter, who are side by side. He managed to save it, but that was almost disastrous for our leader. He's definitely taking risks here to try and stay in the lead. There it is right there. Wow, almost oh. all four wheels in the grass. And look at Gall try and follow him through. He, he decided last second, all right, if you're willing to do it, I gotta be willing to do it. I can't lose touch. Oh, that is the guts and determination that it takes to try and win a race here. But Millward, I mean, like I said, his strategy might be compromised because of the fuel consumption. We'll have to keep our eyes on that. Cy Andra still seven and a half seconds back of these two, the two Alexes as they continue to lead this race and cut their way through traffic. They're going to have Ricardo Fernandez and Rob Olenek that they're going to be coming up to as they go through the kink. This also might help to find things. They've still got 13 minutes left to go. And I, I have a... Oh, no! Oh, off track! Does Miller How did he save it? it? Holy cow. How did he save it? How did Alex Gox stay from... Uh, not hit him? They're, they're still continuing down into Canada quarter, and they're going to stay in line. I think we got a chance to take another look at that. He was just put off line, and Rob... I mean, Rob did the right thing. I think he stayed... He held his line instead of trying to change it. No, Rob's not at fault here. I, th Oh my goodness, because Rob has to go all the way to the outside as a GTO. You absolutely cannot hold it to the inside there. But Millward, the, the drivability of that car to be able to hang on to it in the grass like that, to not stress, to not worry about it, and just have the confidence that you're going to make it back on track. I mean, unbelievable for Millward. A little bit of luck on his side too, because Gall came upon it just as Millward managed to regain control on the track and had to hit the brakes so that he doesn't run into the rear wing of that 10. A little bit farther down, Tobias oh. Gerber. 
uh, in a bit of a fight, and I think he's going to lose his spot here as Fabian Jungbluth is side by side. Is that Phil Lake with him? Yes, it is. Phil Lake with that damage. Doesn't look like it's affecting him too much. He has been able to recover significantly, so now he's up here battling for this eighth position. That's Tapani Lena Luoto, who's up ahead of these guys. Fabian Jungbluth tucked it behind, but look at the draft that's affecting Phil Lake. Tobias Gerber's going to try and go up the inside of five. Phil Lake tries to late break. Tobias tries to late break. Contact! Oh, and rudely shoved to the side. Phil Lake, unfortunately, tried to find the apex, and there was a bright red 22 where he wanted to be. It, for what it's worth, Gerber did give an apology after the contact. You know, I'll be honest though, Joe, I just don't think Phil quite has the respect of these GTP drivers quite yet. Very, uh, wow, actually side by side now between Nick Wakanos and Tapani Li uh, Lino Luoto, as we just saw that on screen as they went through. This is insane. Sorry, that was Fabian Jungbluth who actually ended up getting together with him. My, my apologies. Yeah, L Linda Luoto is going to be able to take seventh with that. Oh, and let's go back to Lescala. My goodness, this is side by side right now between Lescala and Ruola, as I think maybe Alex Gall had a part in it. Alex had has lost a ton of time to Millward. And as we go to the replay, I can tell you that they have gone back side by side. Let's see what kicked it off. So Philly roll. Oh my goodness. So Gaul yeah, actually goes up. off track there. Well, and let's that's go what back ends live. up checking up Philly Rolla. Yuko Lescala right now live has just made the pass on Rolla, but Rolla's going to try and make the pass back. No, Fabian Gerber ends up going up the inside of those two. So it's going to hold both of them off. Yuko Lescala now under some heavy pressure from Philly Rolla, but Philly not with a great exit off of five. Uh, sorry, off of three. So as they head down the long rain sweep here, it's going to be close. Roll of chases. He gets the slipstream as they come up to the braking for turn five. Doesn't poke his nose out, though. But the battle is now on once again as they're still dealing with a lot of the GTP traffic having to do their own thing and get by them at some point. Yeah, 2.4 seconds between Gall and Millward now, but Gall knows he's got a lot more fuel in the tank, so he could probably push a little bit harder. Billy Rolla moves over, allows Matthias Hovdahl to sneak through, make sure that he takes his own racing line, trying to get the apex speed correct. Have to go around Lesklo around the outside of the carousel. Here comes Nick Bacanos following them through as well. So both of them will be clear by the time they get through the carousel. They won't have to worry about Jungbluth behind. So it's just between Lescola and Rolla. Speaking of Jungbluth, he is one of our hard chargers, and something has happened to Michael Turk. He's off track. Oh, this is off the nose of Rob Olenek, actually. Ooh. Well, and Rob's, you know, he's not waiting around for anybody now uh, after all the trouble he's been through. Yeah, I don't think Rob could do anything there. He was on the binders as hard as he could be up the inside there, and the Turk just didn't realize what was happening. Now Nicholas Schneider's around. There he is, that yeah, is the major back of the shot. Nicholas Schneider with major damage. He, he made contact with Reed Miller. Uh, Reed was forced offline, actually. Forced offline by Mudrack. And then look at that. Nicholas Schneider, nowhere to go, ends up coming up and making contact. Look at everybody swerve to avoid him. That was Fernandez who made a little bit of a touch with him in the number 26. This is Reed's perspective. So Reed's thinking to himself, I'm going to head to the apex. But unfortunately, he gets held up there, so he decides to go to the. He decides to hang to the outside to make sure that he doesn't end up crossing over on Schneider. But Schneider thinks that he's going to go on the outside of Reed, so it's just a miscommunication between the two of them. Wow, that just erupted so quickly, and I think things have finally calmed down just a little bit. Unfortunately for Nick Schneider, he did have to come into pit lane for some repairs because of that incident. Uh, our leaders have spread apart, and we mentioned this Millward uh, getting away from Alex Gall by about two and a half seconds, and Lescla is still about eight tenths of a second ahead of Rula. Instead, we've looked back to Ricardo Fernandez because of Reed Miller getting a little bit caught up in things. He's now only seven tenths ahead of, whoa, and he goes off at turn five, outbreaks Break himself. Both of them, both of them with heavy brake fade, brake, brake fade, Joe. Ricardo Fernandez was also off, so this is really starting to affect these guys. The brake fade for the GTOs, for the Nissans, I mean, this is really going to start to cause problems for them. So big adjustments having to be made. 
as they've worn out their equipment here by the end of the race. We're watching from Robbo's perspective in fifth place. Does he have a little bit more underneath him? Can he try and attack that little bit harder than the 14 and the 26? Bravo with a great run off of the carousel. He's got some decent speed on Ricardo Fernandez, who looks like he short shifted just a little bit there. Now breaking quite a bit through the kink. Not something you necessarily have to do in the Audi GTO that much. Usually you can lift and sling it through. Robbo that caught off guard a little bit there. But as they head towards Canada Corner, are they all going to make it through with the brakes? The answer is yes. A little wide though for Fernandez and Olenek able to gather it up get right behind that rear bumper as they start to come up to the main stretch. If Rob gets a good run, I think he's going to have a, 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 a good chance at trying to overtake, oh. and yes, he does. Fernandez with another mistake. Here we go. So Rob Olenek, he's going to have to make the move on Fernandez as soon as he possibly can because Reed Miller's starting to streak away. T ducks in once again to get a little bit more draft. Now he's going to poke his nose out, but Fernandez has the draft from Reed Miller a couple call lengths ahead. Side by side as they dive down into turn one. Rob Olenek late on the brakes. He's going to be able to get it done. A little bit of a bump from Fernandez as Rob Olenek parked it on the apex. All's fair in love of war. Rob Olenek up to fourth. Next on his list, Reed Miller. Can he get himself on the podium? And only five minutes left to go. Oh, he's going to have to fight back, though, because Fernandez now sees the tables turn, and he gets the slipstream. Rob Olnick's going to allow Fernandez to get to the inside. The question is, is Fernandez going to send it too deep up turn five? Let's find out here as they go into the corner. Both of them late on the brakes, but Rob Olnick way off track. He's not going to be able to hold on to it. Move Fernandez back up to P4. Way offline, and unfortunately for Robbo, that means that he is way back behind Fernandez now. Five minutes left. Ooh, side by side battling between Niels Korn and Ben Laughter. This is something that's been happening behind them. Oh. We haven't been able to cover as they make slight contact. Ooh, not happy between Niels Korn and Ben Laughter. Ben actually can't keep it can't get going on gear so Niels Kaur side by side once again they're still side by side they've got Ben Laughter tucked up behind sorry they got Clayton McLeod tucked up behind them as well I think Ben actually let Niels through I think he didn't feel like that move was quite on the one where he was able to affect the pass through six so ends up letting Niels back through but these guys have been battling significantly uh, side by side for a lot of this race as we watch Clayton McLeod streak by I think he knows he'll, he'll still get chances to try and fight back and, and take the position cleanly. Both of them down through the kink, just sliding it all the way out to the curbing as they fly through the kettle bottoms into Canada Corner. Not close enough this time. Where are we with our leaders and how many laps left do we have? We have about three laps left. Uh, well, oh man, it's going to be really tight, Joe, between two and three laps for these guys. And Millward obviously is praying that it's going to be two, due to probably due to his fuel situation. He doesn't look like he's slowing down at all, though. I don't know. If I was Millward, I might back it up just a little bit and let Gall close that gap just a tiny bit to make sure that we didn't get into that position where it had to be three more laps. Oh, and it looks like Laughter might try and get that spot back as he is attacking Neil's core into the first corner. Uh, doesn't quite have the grip. Core is going to be able to fend him off. Takes another little peek down into turn three and then comes back to the racing Ooh. line. Looks like he'll score a little bit deep through three, so this is going to give an opportunity for Ben Laughter on the exit. The question is, how does Niels defend? He's going to take a look at the outside. He's going to try and outbreak him on the outside of the corner. Ben Laughter, a little bit of a side draft there, ends up pulling out wide. Now he's going to try and make the move up the inside. Ben and Niels about the same on the brakes. Looks like Ben's going to just make the apex. <laughs> that was close, and he's going to secure that spot. Let's see whether Niels comes back at him through six. He is going to try and do it. He's going to send it up the inside. Ben Laughter's going to give him the room side by side as they exit six and head, head towards seven. But Ben Laughter looks like he secured the position as they head to hurry down. Niels says that's how you get to the inside and not run into the car on the outside. So the 17 will have to try again to get it back from Ben Laughter. And up at the very front, Alex Millward still has Gall behind him. This was up to two seconds, two and a half seconds, I think. And it's back down to six tenths. Is Alex or well, is Millward specifically trying to save fuel? Is he giving up time having to coast around a little bit here? Well, I think he's giving up time to try and make sure that it's only one more lap after this. Um, it's going to be real tight for these guys. 
like really tight, Joe, as to whether or not that's the case. That's a 148.7 was Millward's last lap compared to the 147.9 from Gall. So he gave up a second that lap alone. Two minutes, eight seconds as they go through Canada corner. Uh, Joe, I think they're going to hit white flag lap this time, but if, I mean, it, it could be, it could go either direction. Uh, we're watching the timer oh, from no. the upper left as he goes very wide around the outside of Haycox. Somehow this is chance. onto it. Does Alex Gall take it now? Or does he wait as they fly up the main straight? It is going to be one lap to go. White flag is out. He attacks now. He's been waiting all race long. He's got the momentum. Millward defends to the inside. Gall's going to have to do it the hard way, or will he do the over-under? He tries for it, but no. Beautiful move through turn one from Alex Millward to fend him off. Trust in that car's downforce. Look at all the trust Millward has. Holy smokes, he went through three so fast. Alex Gall went through three a little bit more cautiously. Millward with some great speed. Here they go down the Moraine Sweep towards turn five. They're going to dive it down there. Who's going to make it through the corner? Both of them look like they're solid and settled to do so, but Millward slides the rear tires just a little bit, giving an opportunity to Gall. They're going to catch up to Ben Laughter and Niels Kaur, who are still battling for that eighth position, for that seventh position. This could also determine part of this battle. And they also look like they're pretty settled on fuel as well. Coming up to Laughter and Core down to the inside. Oh, since it had way too deep, I think there was some net go between Laughter and Millward. So that is going to send Laughter off into the dirt. But the battle for P1 and the prototypes keeps going as they come around the carousel. This might be the last shot. They've also got traffic in front of them. Roman Pavlowski is there. Are they able to avoid? Yes. Here we oh, go. But it's much better run for Alex Gall. Once again, having to go around the outside. This time though, he's got a nose ahead. Can he break deeper? No. Millward is once again into the corner. Oh. Better both of them sliding through as Alex Gall falls back. All Alex Millward has to do is be solid out of the final turn and he has got this one wrapped up way too hot into the corner for Gall. He falls back and Millward, it got close in the end, but he is gonna win the opening round of the Camel GT series. Holy smokes, what a battle between the two of them. Battle for fifth with Havdal trying to shake Mukanos. Havdal with the advantage and he's got quicker straight line speed, so he will retain P5. Tobias Gerber's gonna get P8 over to Tommy Lina Luoto as well. He just made that pass on the last lap. What about our leader in the GTOs? Yuko Leskala, 1.2 seconds ahead of Vili Rola. Not quite as dramatic as what we saw with our prototypes here at the finish, but he's still gotta keep this thing clean. He absolutely does have to keep this thing clean, and Billy Rolla is known for having putting on some pressure on the last lap. He's definitely trying to do so, but it looks like Billy just really struggling to get the car turned in at this stage. I think everyone's been caught out by the tire wear, especially on the Audis in this race as well. It's going to be a real challenge for them, but Yuko Lesko looks like he's free and clear. Yes, yeah, so I think he'll just continue the pattern that he established last season, where he's looking to try and win the majority of the races. Rola is going to have to fight extremely hard to see if he can take it to Yuko. It's not without contest today, Joe. Vili Rola put some heavy pressure on Yuko, and I think Yuko's going to have to up his game in order to match it. So out of Bill Mitchell Bend, we'll also have a fight between Fernandez and Olenek. It looks uh, close behind them, but from the final corner, the number five picks up exactly where he left off. The champion sporting some golds is going to take gold here today with a win at Road America. That battle for P4 between Ricardo Fernandez and Rob Olnick still close. Rob Olnick looks better through the corners, but he made a mistake through the kink, which has put him a couple of tenths behind. Ricardo Fernandez with a good exit will have this spot secured. He gets it. Put Ricardo Fernandez in fourth. Reed Miller is going to finish ahead of them in third as well with Rob Olnick in fifth. And I believe that's the last few on the track that are now trickling across. So let's take a quick break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We'll come back with the official results as well as driver interviews. So stick around.
Welcome back to Road America. Round one for the Camel GT series had a fantastic finish, but it was Alex Millward who returns to the series and kicks it off with a victory ahead of Alex Gall, who fought him the entire way, tried to play some sneaky fuel games, but he just couldn't overtake on that last lap when he finally attacked. Cy Andra was really gaining, but maybe saved a little bit too much himself and messed around with Fabian Gerber a lot along the way, but still claimed to himself a podium. Fabian Gerber finished in fourth in the end. New car, maybe it doesn't suit him. We'll find out if we get to talk to him. Matthias Hovdahl with the top five today was ahead of Nick Mukanos, who is in six. I got to mention him briefly, but there was so much action, we didn't get to focus on it. Fabian Jungbluth went from 12th to 7th, up five spots. Nicely done. Tobias Gerber was eighth, and Tapani Lanuloto was ninth. Phil Lake going backwards after he went off track early on and just wasn't able to recover as much as he would have liked. Joseph Mudrack, another hard charger, up six spots from 17th to 11th. Stephen Warcup was 12th with Ator Sintez Gindo in 13th, and it's Michael Turk P14 and Dan Bull, the newcomer, finishing 15th. Uh, problems today for both Clayton McLeod and Nick Schneider, especially, who were 16th and 17th. Yuko Leskala takes yet another win in the series, but this one was not as easy as it has been in the past. Billy Rolla leading for a lot of that race after a mistake from Yuko Leskala put him behind. Billy Rolla ends up coming home in second after a pass on the front straightaway about halfway through the race. Reed Miller, though, Mr. Consistency ends up gaining two spots due to battles that happened ahead of him. Gets in home in the third position on pace alone. Ricardo Fernandez, a great race for himself, was up in third, falls back to fourth position, but still having climbed two spots from a starting spot of sixth. Rob Olenek, also doing a great job today, comes home in the fifth, posi uh, in the fifth position with Roman Pawlowski doing a great job starting from the back of the field, ends up in sixth spot today. Niels Kor and Ben Laughter, their battle is broken up by our battle for the lead in the G. TPs. Niels is going to come home in 7th with Ben Laughter even after his accident coming home in 8th. Ian Haycox comes home in 9th with Max Vade Thomason in 10th. Ove Trangrate and Christian Steinberger round out your field. And we've got our winner ready to talk to us, Alex Millward, who makes a return and finds himself back on the pace very quickly. Alex, you seem to like all the changes that have been made to the Nissan. What are your thoughts after that one? Hi, Joe. Yeah, thanks. Um, been away for a while the, the changes are pretty quick it's a fun car um i guess it suits my driving style a bit of the lotus 79 coming across in it so yeah we'll see if it was luck and the other guys will catch up i'm sure they will we heard some talk from drivers that the the fuel consumption was a lot higher this season uh how close was it on fuel for you did you have to do any saving to get to the end yeah i think from like lap 10 or 15 i was fuel saving pretty much half the race. Um, I'm pretty sure Alex Gal was fuel saving as well because he was happy to tuck behind me um, when I was off the gas way early going into a lot of the corners. Um, he was even gracious enough to stop as I went off the grass at the kink. So very thanks for that, Alex. <laughs> Yeah, clearly a little bit of luck on your side today. Well, uh, will we see you stick around? Because uh, you've certainly given a lot of the fast guys something to think about. We'd like to see that kind of competition. Yeah, I'll try. I mean, just busy. Um, so we'll see. But uh, yeah, it's real good fun racing with these guys as usual. I mean, that was, that was really intense. I'm absolutely drenched as per usual. So if anything, it's a good workout. Stick around, Joe. All right. Well, hopefully it'll be nice and swole after this is all said and done in 12 rounds. <laughs> Congratulations, Alex. Cheers. Uh, Alex Millward winning with an exercise routine of uh, taking victories out here. Meanwhile, I believe Adam has caught up with Reed Miller, who was our third place finisher in the GTOs. Yeah, Reed, a good, very consistent race from you today. I mean, nothing that we don't haven't come to expect from you at all, but still fantastic driving out there. But quite a bit has changed about the car. Talk to us about how it feels to drive this Audi now. Um, it's kind of hard. Am I on mute? I'm in mute. No, you're good. We hear you. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, it's it's um hard. I don't know. I don't have enough experience yet to really put all the pieces together. It handles a bit differently, but also not entirely differently than before. So it's, it's, um, I don't know, it's pretty fun. I, th I think it's a little bit more of a challenge, uh, in the races. Yeah, it definitely looked like a challenge under braking for quite a few of the drivers, but of course, with all the changes to both classes, this affects also how the, uh, multi-class works. 
and considering the fact that you were mixed up in quite a few battles over the course of the race, both with your class and uh, the Nissans, how is that? It, it, has that aspect changed at all? I mean, I know that we know that they're about you know three to four seconds faster than you guys uh, than they were last season, but has that changed how uh, the two classes interact at all? Um, it'll probably shake out as the season goes on. I think this is a very uh, high-speed track, so it wasn't really... There's always kind of a big difference between the two cars here, so I think we might see more in the, the smaller, shorter tracks and street tracks uh, kind of thing, and that might be a little bit different where the uh, GTPs will have a bit more of a pace advantage and maybe not struggle so much uh, in the slower corners. That's what I'm kind of thinking. So, Reva, the second place in the championship last season, uh, what are your hopes for this season as you continue forward? Oh, going for it all the way. Uh, it's going to be another tough season. Today was a very tough race, and I'm uh, very happy with the result, but I'll, I'll keep pushing forward for the W. For sure, Reed. And is there anyone you want to thank before we let you go today? Uh, big thanks to all the Dirty Short boys. Good race for everyone today. Thanks. That was Reed Miller, our third place finisher in the GTOs. And it looks like Joe has caught up with Alex Gall's second place in the GTPs. Alex, you nearly went back to back on victories between last season and, and this one. But you were stopped by Millward. He mentioned that you were uh, saving a little bit of fuel behind him. We could kind of pick up on that, too. But do you regret waiting as long as you did to finally attack? Do you feel like you should have maybe tried to go sooner? Hey guys, um, no, I mean, he was, uh, I think he was a lot quicker than me in clean air. Only in traffic, I was able to catch up. So my strategy was, I'm probably going to eat the tires less than he was. So I'm just sitting behind and I'm waiting for him to make a mistake, which didn't happen, but almost I could see him counter steering in the, in most corners. So <laughs> almost worked. They almost had him on the ropes then. Uh, well, still, you've you've come back and uh, you've competed in, in two races uh, in quick succession here. So do you plan to stick around with your teammate, Sai, and, and try to compete for the whole season? Yeah, I think I'll try, yeah. I think I will try. The car is very different now. I seem to come out of top of the new update, and Alex also seems to be. So it would be very interesting to see how it goes. How do you think it'll compare at a place like Okayama, which has a lot of slow hairpins compared to uh, some place like here? Well, I'm pretty sure that the car will do very well because it's, um, it has a lot of grip now. It's, they, they tamed the beast, I, I like to say. It. That's what, that way, I, they tamed the beast and now it's, uh, it's just a big skip barber. <laughs> so quite a comparison. Well, congratulations on a uh, podium as well with second place. And uh, feel free to uh, thank anybody who helped make this one possible. I will thank Sai, and I will also thank people that I dragged, uh, I dragged in this series, including Lee Score. And even for this race, Dan Bull, he was, uh, it was his first race here. Uh, great stuff. Glad that you're uh, bringing in some new faces as that was Alex Gall, second place, and his teammate Cy Andre came home a little bit behind him as Adam is caught up with him. Yeah, Cy, it looks like, I mean, it just was a real challenge out there for everybody, but it seemed like you got caught up by traffic more often than most people. Talk to me about your day. Well, if you want to talk about traffic, I mean, Fabian got the worst of it, and I think Phil had the... Uh, the best off I ever saw in this in the sense of just kind of sliding off the side of my screen but uh, I mean traffic I'd, I'd say it's fairly neutral between me and the Alex's as I'd say uh, I was a little bit disappointed with the screw up I had on the second to last lap I think I could have caught them while they were battling on the last lap and maybe I don't know done something but yeah I fell back towards Fabian and then just all my focus was staying ahead of him yeah, but it was a fantastic race, and awesome to see how the, the, the developments for both of these machines are affecting the races. The brake fade definitely had an effect on people. We saw multiple people going deep into turn five. Not as many in Canada Corner, but talk to me about how different that is for you in the car compared to last season. Oh, it's absolutely... Uh, well, I can't say it here, but it's uh, it, it absolutely screws with your mind, because uh, on the previous car, it felt like you were just you're just asking for, I want to slow down this much when you hit the brake. And the car would do it, barring a lockup, obviously. But in this car, you need to modulate it more, and the car moves around under brake more. So you're kind of like twitching the steering wheel, sort of modulating the brake pedal to get to slow down. And honestly, at the end of the race, I just decided to say, screw it. I'm just going to underbrake the car a little bit just so I can get consistency into the braking zones. 
Absolutely, and I know that that'll that'll wean itself out over the course of the season for you guys. But heading to Okayama next week, I mean, with the how much these cars have changed, what are your thoughts? What are your ex- expectations for driving this thing around that circuit? The hairpins aren't going to be as scary because the car has much better drive off the slow speed corners. But I will say, the uh, the double left handers because of how st- stiffly the car is sprung, it's going to be a lot more bouncy. Well, it's definitely going to be exciting to watch for sure, and I know my interest is absolutely peaked heading into the rest of this season, but Sai, is there anyone you want to thank before we let you go today? First off, Alex Gell. Alex did the majority of the setup work this week. He knew the car was basically a brand new car. He did a lot of the setup work, and I basically came in and tweaked a few things at the end. So a huge thank you to Alex, and he deserves that second place. And honestly, I think he would have won if he was a bit aggressive. I was telling him to push in the middle of the race, but uh, I mean... He ended up getting second, and I think that was a safe option, considering how quick uh, Millward was. Um, and honestly, unfortunately, second, uh, my close friend, and I think a lot of people here know him, John King passed away recently. So I want to say a huge thank you to John for having a great influence on me and the rest of the I- I racing community. And I uh, uh, hope you rest in peace. Yeah, our thoughts definitely go out to John's family. We heard about that um, just over the last couple of days, and it has been heartbreaking. But... Um, there will be more time to reflect on John's life as we continue on our broadcasts over the course of this week. And Sai, thanks for joining us once again, and congrats on third place. Thank you. That was Sai Andra, our third place finisher in the GTPs. I believe that's going to wrap up our interviews for this afternoon. So we're going to thank the Camel GT community for bringing us back for another season of coverage. But we also want to thank the companies that provide the software and the hardware for our broadcasts listed here on your screen. Additional thanks go to June Lamont, who provides our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of her great work. And thanks to the team today, Adam, Sean, and Dougie. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at globalsimracingchannel.com. Also check out our social media, which includes Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. If you'd like to support us, check out our merchandise store at gsrc.storenv.com. we got a link in the description below. The next race, as we mentioned, will be at Okayama over to Japan. That'll be Saturday, March 27th at new, at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. We also have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. In just a few hours' time, we have the Majors Team Endurance Challenge finale. That'll be at, at Nürburgring, and that will kick off at 5 p.m. Eastern. So until next time, race clean, race hard. We'll see you on the track.